Hi, and welcome to Techstars LA and Techstars Spaces 2022 Fall Demo Day, which is airing live on Stonks in partnership with our media partners .LA and Payload Space. I'm Matt Kozlov, Managing Director of the Programs, and on behalf of Techstars and the 12 amazing companies presenting today, thank you for joining us. For those of you new to Techstars, we are the global network that helps entrepreneurs succeed. To date, we've invested in over 3,500 companies and our portfolio's combined market cap is over $83 billion. Techstars is deeply committed to investing in and supporting the LA and space ecosystems. To date, over 230 companies have graduated from our LA-based programs, and 110 alumni from other Techstars programs have decided to build their companies here. Collectively, they've raised over $3.6 billion. And our space portfolio is similarly strong, with 44 companies who have raised close to $900 million. Today's program is a bit special. For this cohort, we combine Techstars LA and Techstars Space and are proud to have support from our long-standing partners, NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory and the United States Space Force. Looking forward, in 2023, we will be running four programs. In March, we are excited to run two programs simultaneously, Techstars LA, powered by JP Morgan, and Techstars Healthcare, sponsored by Cedar sinai Point32 Health, UC Irvine Health, and United Healthcare. And in September, we will also be running two programs simultaneously, Techstars LA, powered by JP Morgan, and Techstars Space. You're about to hear 12 awesome pitches from 12 awesome founders, followed by short interviews with Sam Adams, CEO of .LA, and Ari Lewis, co-founder of Payload Space. But we don't want you to just listen. Thanks to Stonks, this is an interactive event. You'll see live chat on the side. All our founders are participating live. And down below, you'll find overviews on every company and one-click buttons to get in touch. Please reach out to them in real time if you'd like to learn more, but also reach out to them if you think you can be helpful. Our ask of you is that you try to find at least one company that you can be helpful to. Maybe it's an introduction to a customer, a potential hire, an investor. If all of you watching today do one thing, just one thing, imagine what these teams might accomplish today alone. And now, please meet the 2022 fall class of Techstars LA and Techstars Space. In the mid-1800s, the Transcontinental Railroad revolutionized industry and the lives of everyday Americans. The rails connected the most remote parts of America, allowing us to transport goods across the nation and creating a production boom that was felt across the world. The next industrial revolution is not on Earth, but in space, where the lack of gravity allows us to create revolutionary products that simply cannot be made on Earth. In space, we can create fiber optic cables that can transport 100 times as much data across the globe, groundbreaking pharmaceuticals that can cure blindness and better treat cancer, and massively more efficient electronics with applications such as longer range electric vehicles and better performing solar panels. But there's a problem. Today, the only way to manufacture in space and recover products back on Earth is through the International Space Station. With the astronauts on board and only one US resupply vehicle bringing cargo up and down just four times a year, customers looking to manufacture in space are forced to deal with inaccessibly high cost and wait times longer than six months. In Orbit is solving this problem with the first end-to-end -end service for mass manufacturing in space that will scale this market to $30 billion by 2030. Here's how it works. We take our customers' manufacturing equipment inside our cargo exchange module and get it to space on our orbital platform, the Haven Shepard, which provides their equipment with the power and data needed to operate. Once the factory is operating in space, the Haven Retriever, a reusable re-entry vehicle, provides a recurring resupply service, delivering raw materials up in exchange for finished products to bring back down to Earth. In Orbit is the only company building a permanent orbital station that can robotically exchange equipment between one another, resulting in a service with a 75% reduction in cost and 100 times the yearly capacity when compared to the ISS. This has been validated by industry, who is lining up to use our service. And in the last 10 months, we have generated a $180 million contract pipeline from manufacturers making pharmaceuticals and biotech products to material developers creating fiber optics and metal alloys, and even future space station operators requiring transportation services. We are also actively partnered with NASA 
through a Space Act agreement and have an MOU from the Air Force Research Laboratory. And just last month, we completed our full-scale Haven Retriever prototype, a considerable milestone on our path to a 2024 mission. My co-founders and I have built and flown over 15 satellites, ranging from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, the James Webb Space Telescope, working at industry primes such as Northrop Grumman, Raytheon, and NASA. We have the know-how and drive to lead this in-space manufacturing paradigm. Just as the iron tracks connected to the coasts, in orbit is laying the tracks to provide the infrastructure and transportation between space and Earth. Please reach out if you want to learn more. What are the benefits of manufacturing in space? When we go to space, we operate in a free fall environment, and we call that microgravity or weightlessness. And that just doesn't affect humans, it also affects materials. When we take gravity away, we also remove a lot of physical phenomena that we see here on Earth. For example, buoyancy. Here on Earth, dense objects sink, light objects rise, like oil and water. But in space, that doesn't happen. So objects of different densities wouldn't separate, and we can create new materials, new metal alloys, new plastics, new glasses. And these all have extremely beneficial qualities when it comes to corrosion resistance, uh, fracture resistance, and even thermal ca capabilities. And they are demanding for some of the most extreme environments here on Earth, such as oil and gas, or aerospace, or industrial manufacturing. Uh, other ones are, when you remove buoyancy, you also can get lower convection, which causes turbulence in materials. And this can make higher quality crystal structures, which is useful in fiber optics, useful in optics, uh, as well as uh, pharmaceuticals. There are already manufacturing solutions in space, such as the ISS, which are manned. Why are you all going after an unmanned solution? When we started our customer discovery process, we learned two primary pain points, that getting to space and back is expensive, and that there isn't enough flights in general. So what customers want is they want lower cost and they want more frequent access to space and back for research and manufacturing. And the biggest reason for this is that the ISS is a crew operated station. Astronauts, though they do fantastic work, it's hard to keep them alive in probably one of the most demanding environments. You have to ship resources up there so that they can eat, they can breathe, they can drink. You have to train them. You need a huge team of people to continuously monitor and also the life support systems up there need to be designed and built. Everything is very expensive. And of course, there's only two US vehicles that fly to the ISS right now on an operational basis. Only one of them brings cargo down. So what we decided to fix this problem and solve their pain points is take the crew out. So now we can fly for cheaper. We can have more flights a year. We can fly on multiple different launch vehicles there and back. Uh, we also actually get a better microgravity environment because you don't have the astronauts uh, touching lots of the space station as well as their life support systems make a lot of vibrations. Hi, I'm Ryan James, co-founder and CEO of Doppel Technologies, and this is my dad a doctor who delivers babies. When I was just six weeks old, he moved our family over a thousand miles across the country to Kalamazoo, Michigan, a city with one of the highest black infant mortality rates in our nation and led a community-wide effort until that city had one of the lowest. His work taught me that when you provide equal access to historically underserved communities, you get equal outcomes. Inspired by my dad, but much more excited about cutting edge technology than stethoscopes, I pursued a PhD in computer science where I met my two co-founders, then PhD advisors, Dr. Sessler and Dr. Monsky. And together, we developed a novel system allowing a remote surgeon in virtual reality to control a robot and other equipment and safely perform surgery over distance enabling surgeons to treat patients in historically underserved rural areas. To apply a version of my dad's formula on a global scale, we co-founded Doppel, where we're building a software platform enabling robotic surgery 
over the internet to bring life-saving procedures to rural communities. Our software platform consists of a cloud service and a virtual and augmented reality operating system. Our cloud service turns existing offline surgical devices into telesurgical devices that can be operated over the internet and purchased by rural hospitals. Our AR VR operating system uses applications enabling virtual presence for the remote operator with advanced immersive visualizations. Every year, there are over 56 million procedures that are not performed on rural patients around the world that could be performed with our platform. And with our 2,500 per procedure fee, this is a huge opportunity. We're starting with a minimally invasive procedure our co-founder, Dr. Sessler, performs called catheter ablation. Its low risk and low latency profile make it ideal for telesurgery. And as our platform develops, we'll expand into more complex procedures in larger markets. We've developed a fully functional catheter ablation telesurgery system with our hardware vendors and safely performed three animal procedures. One was from Chicago to Seattle. We've received four letters of support from rural hospitals in Washington, and we're excited to announce we're in talks with Ocean Beach Hospital, where next year we'll start performing ablations with a surgeon in the room and gradually move the surgeon out as our technology is cleared and we prepare to safely scale to hospitals around the world. Our mission is equal access to healthcare. If you believe in that mission, please reach out. Thank you. What if the network were to go down? We're starting with a procedure that can tolerate network outages. Uh, it's called catheter ablation. It's a very simple, safe procedure that my co-founder performs. Um, it can tolerate network outages, it can tolerate high latency, uh, and as our platform develops, we'll expand into more complex procedures over time. Can you tell me a little bit about the market landscape here? Like, What are the other companies who are in the telesurgery space and how are you differentiated from them? They're all trying to break into the telesurgery space, um, but they're starting with, uh, some of them are starting with very complex procedures. Um, most important, all of them are building their entire system in-house, so proprietary. They're building the full stack from robotics to, um, to the cloud services, to the devices that go in the patient. Um, and that takes an incredible amount of expertise and capital. And so when you juxtapose that with our approach, um, where we have an open ecosystem of surgical device companies and third-party companies who are building all sorts of amazing technology. We just build the network connectivity and the user interface for their technology so they can plug and play into our platform and immediately um, tap into the telesurgery market. And um, that just expedites innovation. It's gonna result in um, better care for patients, faster, safer, uh, and so we're, we're really excited about our, our more open ecosystem approach versus the, uh, the monolithic build everything in-house approach. I know that rural hospitals and access to uh, less physically accessible um, regions is, is a big part of the opportunity here at Doppel. So uh, how, how does your solution impact those types of rural hospital systems? Our solution has a significant impact on rural hospitals and hospital systems. Um, for, for rural hospitals, about two thirds of the 1800 rural hospitals in the US are supported by the government. Um, about 30% uh, or 631 of those hospitals are at risk of closure. And a big reason why is because they're performing these low margin procedures. Um, and so the big opportunity that we bring them is not only local access for their communities, but also uh, these high margin specialty procedures that can drive revenue. In 1915, the first aerial map was created using surveillance photos during World War I. In 1957, the first satellite was launched for observation. 
In 2013, the first commercial drones became popular. This opened the floodgates. Now we rely on Aerial Insights each and every day, and it's continuing to grow. The drone industry is expected to be worth $90 billion by the end of the decade. But most drones on the market today are effectively toys with less than 20 minutes of battery life, or the more advanced systems are large, unwieldy, and require up to a month of training. That's why many professionals still rely on old technology. But satellites, planes, and helicopters are expensive, less precise, and can take hours to get into position. Our wingspan aircraft is air ready in less than two minutes. Our patented seven foot airplane expands from a backpack and quickly snaps together. Simply throw it like a football and let the autonomy take over. On a single battery, it will fly for two hours and carry two pounds of payload. That's five times longer than similar sized systems with 10 times more weight. Wingspan carries high resolution cameras that have the power to see day or night across different spectrums of light and measures with centimeter level accuracy. It's also the first aircraft of its kind to have an Edge AI computer on board, giving it the brain power to process what it sees in real time. It can detect its surroundings, analyze the data, and automatically alert when it finds what the operator told it to look for without having a team of people monitoring a feed. Wingspan can also operate in remote areas without GPS and can even act as an antenna to provide reliable, secure communications for the teams on the ground. Wingspan is made in the US. Our components comply with US national security guidelines and we have two granted US patents. We also offer Wingspan on a subscription basis where our team will handle maintenance, training, pilot services, and even aircraft surge support at a compelling price. Our customers will also get the latest software and hardware updates so it's future-proof. I'm James Barbieri, the CEO and co-founder of Wingspan. I have over 10 years of experience working in aerospace for Boeing and the US intelligence community. My co-founder and chief customer officer, Michelle Medeiros, spent a decade as a TV news reporter, where she saw firsthand how emergency responders rely on real-time aerial insights to keep the community safe. We also have an amazing team investors, and world-class advisors. In less than eight months, we've had exceptional demand from marquee customers, including from U.S. Special Forces and the U.S. Air Force. We're projecting $8 million in revenue in 2023 and $45 million in revenue by 2024. Join us as Wingspan expands what's possible with aerial intelligence for those that keep our world running. Why is it important you serve both the commercial and defense markets? So Wingspan is really unique because when we serve both our commercial and our defense customers, that means that we're able to actually design and keep making our product better at the velocity of the commercial market, but with the quality and the rigor and the high levels of security that we build in for our defense customers. Another big factor there actually is that typically when the defense market is really prosperous, sometimes the economy and enterprises are buying much less. And historically, the inverse has proven to be true. So it actually is a really great sign for a well-rounded, healthy company to have a really good bearing in both our defense and commercial market so that we can remain a long-term healthy business. How does Wingspan plan to position itself in the future of the drone industry? We are really excited about the future of the drone industry with Wingspan. Our systems have a smart onboard computer and we see this future where there are multiple of our systems out there that can do cooperative swarming so that they can accomplish missions for the end user faster and more efficiently. Instead of relying on extremely high cost, complicated, expensive assets, systems like Wingspan are truly gonna be a turnkey aerial intelligence solution for a broad range of users. And our technology is gonna grow and mature with this fast growing market that's growing over 30% year over year. And we are well positioned to achieve that future. 
You were just voted most innovative startup of the year at the Natural Disaster Expo. Can you tell us more about that? Yes. Out of over 300 exhibitors, uh, really amazing companies, including a lot of our uh, direct drone competitors out there, we were voted the most innovative technology by our peers and others that really saw what we're bringing to the market, which is a highly powerful drone in a super simple, easy to use footprint, which is such a big deal for our first responders like forest firefighters that need to combat wildfires in really difficult environments, fly longer and get real-time alerts on the situation so that they can get in front of those emergency situations before they become a disaster. Hi, I'm Liv, CEO and founder of Liberate. Six years ago, I landed my dream job at a high growth startup. I hustled hard, put in long hours, and received regular promotions. But behind my success and excitement at the company was constant and debilitating stress and isolation that led to burnout. I experienced loss of appetite, anxiety tremors, inability to sleep, and even visual impairment. I felt lonely and lost in managing my stress at work. My employer had limited resources available to help, and what they did have didn't work. So I left my dream job and higher earner salary in order to prioritize my mental health. I'm not alone. 80% of employees feel stressed and anxious on a daily basis. 26% dread going to work, 52% call out sick, and 30% resign because of mental health. For employees with no meaningful connections at work, this resignation rate doubles. This trend is costing employers $300 billion in lost productivity every year, and it's getting worse. The good news is that this is a fixable problem. At Liberate, we're providing the antidote to burnout. We are a mental fitness platform that is team-oriented and uses proven wellness practices to increase happiness and resilience at work. Liberate's clients engage with the platform through live virtual classes, on-demand content, and a Slack integration. Our method includes exercises like mindful movement, journaling, meditation, and more to increase connection and mental well-being. Let's see how it works with Alex. Alex works at a tech company in a remote environment and is dealing with high levels of stress and disengagement. Then the company signs up for Liberate. Alex and his team connect through interactive virtual classes and learn new stress management tools. The on-demand classes help Alex and his team build skills like presence and confidence. The team uses the Liberate Slack channel to engage with each other on a human level through team prompts and daily wellness exercises. Most solutions on the market offer a disconnected experience with low customer satisfaction and poor engagement. Liberate's tech-enabled team-centered approach sees two times customer satisfaction and five times engagement over competitors. Liberate is led by experts in health, wellness, and psychology. I'm personally a certified meditation and mindfulness teacher, and every instructor on our roster completes a Liberate Leader training program to deliver accessible and approachable wellness resources for our clients. At less than two years old, we've serviced hundreds of companies from SMB to enterprise through monthly and annual contracts. To date, Liberate has helped nearly 5,000 employees feel happier and more productive at work, and we're just getting started. We've bootstrapped our way to a profitable six-figure business and are growing by 275% year over year. Liberate is on a mission to end burnout for good. If you're interested in learning more, let's talk. So I'd like to learn a little bit about the development of the Liberate method and, and how it evolved and came to be in the, in the form it is today. The Liberate Method was created in partnership with a mental performance coach, really designed to give employees and end users just enough time with a proven practice to reap the benefits, but then move on to keep everyone engaged. Because what I found through my own experience was a lot of people in my life didn't want to go to a 60 minute yoga class or a 30 minute meditation, and so they were missing out on the benefits and the tools that you can gain from those practices. So with our method, we spend five minutes setting intentions. We spend five minutes on mindful movement, which can be breath work or gentle stretching you can do at your desk. 
And then we move into journaling to really help us release our worries on paper, set goals and achieve them. And then we move into conversation as an opportunity for team members to connect on a human level before grounding the practice with meditation. And what we found with this approach is that we're only spending five to 10 minutes on a practice. And for some people, doing meditation in the middle of the workday can feel a little like whiplash. You go from moving a million miles a minute to complete stillness. But with our method, we really start with movement and slow down working our way to meditation. So by the time we get there, it's much more accessible and approachable for all levels. Could you tell me a bit about the competitive landscape, the organizations that are currently offering individuals and organizations uh, similar services and, and how Liberate differentiates from them? Definitely. Liberate really differentiates because we're focused both on mental well-being and connection for organizations. And often the connection piece is what's missing from wellness programs that are focused on the individual experience. 43% of employees don't feel connected to their coworkers. 38% of them don't trust them. And in this nature of remote and hybrid work, employees really need a way to feel connected to their coworkers as well as they need resources to protect against burnout and support well-being. So we're focused on bringing both connection and mental well-being together under one organization. And in the past, it's been you have to have two different vendors to do that. Hello, my name is Chastity Wright, and I'm the founder and CEO of Infotron Software Suite. In 2006, while deployed to Iraq as a U.S. Air Force engineer, a hacker takedown left air crews, ships, and troops on the ground totally unable to communicate with command. All connection was lost. But you know what was terrifying? The hackers used stolen protected information to not only take down our entire network, but also our backup network. We were blind for three days, working 24 hours around the clock, rebuilding a new system. We could have been attacked and nearly 20,000 people would have never made it back home to their loved ones. It became abundantly clear to me that if hackers could take down the world's most advanced military systems, regular businesses do not stand a chance. Imagine this attack happening to a hospital or a power grid the cost and loss of lives will be catastrophic. Cyber crimes are getting worse and will cost the world $11 trillion by 2025. International relations continue to deteriorate, inciting adversaries to use more advanced attacks like Harvest Now, Decrypt Later, which involves stealing encrypted data and storing it until a quantum computer is available. This is why we built Infotron. Infotron identifies and protects against these highly sophisticated attacks. First, we do our quantum vulnerability risk assessment, where we look for devices and applications that use hackable encryption. Next, we meet with our customer to create a migration program for these hackable devices and software. And last, we update the devices and applications to Infotron's proprietary protection methods, which is an advanced encryption that provides stronger protection from Harvest Now, Decrypt Later, and quantum computer attacks. Our patent was awarded in September of 2022, along with several trademarks. We currently protect 10,000 endpoints who pay a monthly or annual subscription, bringing us to a revenue of $600,000 this year. And with our new contracts and pipeline starting in quarter one of 2023, our revenue will be $1.2 million in 2023. We are a team of former U.S. military, NSA, and commercial cyber industry experts that have experienced similar attacks. As technology evolves, so do hackers, and we're here to make sure that the hackers don't win. Contact us to learn how Infotron is protecting devices and applications from the new frontier of cyber attacks. There are other companies you know, in the space. What is the differentiation that y'all bring to the table? We have a entirely new way method of, of doing or, or leveraging post-secure quantum. Um, we look at the type of attack that, that is happening 
and we're able to change the type of protection in real time, in almost real time, according to the type of threat. So if it's a code-based threat, we'll use a, a post-secure quantum uh, code-based protection for it. Um, if it's uh, a system threat, we'll, you know, we're able to use, that's what our patent is about. It's about being able to adapt according to the threat while using the highest level of post-secure quantum protection. The first market you're going after is IoT. Can you talk about some of the other areas where this technology might apply? Absolutely. Post-secure cryptography, cybersecurity. This is a new frontier of cybersecurity. So um, this will apply in different markets from fintech to smart cities, autonomous cars, uh, our power grid, uh, hospitals, um, because the, all of these industries have protected information that will be affected by a quantum computer attack. The Techstars Accelerator started three months ago. Can you talk about some of the traction you've made since you've joined the program? For us, one of the greatest things so far that has come out of Techstars is our mentors. The mentors that we that we chose also chose us. So the energy and the you know the attention has been reciprocal. Like we have meetings set up since Mentor Magic Week. Like before we even had you know had to pick them, um, it was it was a mutuality there. Um, so that makes a startup founder feel great. Like, hey, the same people that we felt like we could um, possibly work with have wanted to work with us. Uh, we've also been able to do make ground and break ground with uh, JPL, which is something that we've been wanting to do. Um, we were trying to kind of crack the code in the space uh, market, and we have uh, on several fronts, not just with JPL, but also with Space Force. So those, uh, as far as having like, Letters of interest, letters of support, we've been able to get those um, in pipeline. Um, I've kind of veered off and been able to get some sales in pipeline to start in Q1 uh, to take our revenue, almost double our revenue going into uh, 2023. Hi, my name is Ben Winston, co-founder and CEO of Rotender. At Rotender, we're solving the most important problem that has plagued humanity for thousands of years long waits for alcoholic drinks at sports stadiums and concerts. Let's take a look at what we're talking about. Just take a look at these waits. Disgusting, reprehensible. In fact, over 170 million Americans attend live events each year and wait an average of 30 minutes for their cocktails. But that's about to change. Rosender has introduced a fully automated bar that pours shots and cocktails in 30 seconds or less. You go up to the machine, order the drink you want, tap your card to pay, and you're done. Your drink is poured instantly. It's as easy as humanly and robotically possible. Compared to competitors, Rotender has the smallest footprint at just nine square feet and weighs only 300 pounds. Competitors weigh well over a thousand pounds. We're the, the most affordable option on the market at just $35,000 a year. And we're the most portable because our machine is on wheels and doesn't require piping into water lines. These machines are huge earners for the venues that they reside in. One Rotender unit operating 18 or more hours a week will earn a venue over $700,000 a year in drink revenue. It'll save that venue over $175,000 a year in spillage and $22,500 a year in labor. All that value adds up to $900,000 a year for the venue. We charge a commission of 10% per drink and a $1,000 a month subscription, which nets Rotender $35,000 in ARR per unit. We spent the last three years building the perfect robot bartender and have had major wins with our initial partners. In March, we launched at a nightclub to break through sales, tracking over $100,000 a year in drink revenue for them. That allowed us to sign a pilot with the Microsoft Theater, where we served $2,600 a night in drink revenue and signed a pilot with the Crypto.com Arena. And most recently, we brought on Live Nation as our first paying customer, deploying the unit at their House of Blues location in Las Vegas. By the end of next year, Road Center units will be earning close to $5 million in GMV for their venues, will be operating at a 67% profit margin, and have a five month payback period on the production costs of our machines. The market for on-premise alcohol is huge and will be 125 billion a year by 2030. I've co-founded two venture-backed startups here in Los Angeles. My co-founder, Alec, has a master's in CS and a bachelor's in mechanical engineering. And our VP of software, Corey, is from IBM and DD. We also have extraordinary investors backing us, angels from companies like Grubhub and WAG, and advisors from SBE, Live Nation, and others. So raise a glass and join us as we get people time back for the game, the show, their friends, and their lives. Thank you. For 
especially large venues. I know that you're pushing into uh, the the Microsoft Theater, House Blues, Crypto.com Arena. I'll still always call it Staples Center. Um, but yeah, can you tell me a bit about like the feedback that you've been getting there and the types of pain points that Rotenders is solving there? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so, so basically, if you're a venue, um, you have massive demand, especially if you're a popular one, for alcohol. You've got to serve it in a limited amount of time. People have come to see a show. They've come to experience their Friday night. Um, and by state mandate, you got to stop serving at a certain point, and people people do need to go home, Sam. So, um, so how do you solve that problem of um, the overwhelming demand when you're rate limited for how much your bars can serve? Um, so that's the main problem that Rotender is solving for venues. It's basically staffing. Um, staffing challenges are horrible these days. They're the worst they've ever been. Excuse me, that they've ever been. And um, and it's also a revenue lift to the venues. So we have a machine that pours twice as many drinks as a regular bartender can in an hour or so. They're seeing double the revenue. Um, they're also and they're seeing machines that show up every day. Uh, they don't call out sick. They're not self-driving, so they're not going to go anywhere. Um, and so and then, and then you have something that's easier to maintain than a bar too. Barbacks spend about ten minutes a night maintaining our machines. So for venue managers, they're like, okay, thank God. Um, we can definitely serve everybody. Venue owners are happy because of the revenue lift, um, and the price point is uh, it, the price is right for these venues. Especially in these situations where you, you know you're not necessarily able to be uh, maintaining them on a nightly basis, right? You're relying on on uh, venue staff. Like, what is how how do you ensure uh, ensure that reliability in that kind of a situation? Yeah, well, we have some pretty good um, instrumentation in the machine, so we know what's going on on the cloud. Uh, if something's wrong, we can do a maintenance uh, service request, send somebody out there. Uh, but the machines are generally like really reliable, uh, and, and like I said, they they never call out. Um, they've been you know stress tested uh, to far far beyond what a human can do, frankly. So that's um, so we're talking about reliability. We're talking about um, doing the same thing hundreds of thousands of times, and that's what a machine is best at. So tell me about the ty the types of drinks that you know you specialize in. I know there's a wide range of complexity in uh, different drinks and obviously variety. So yeah, what, what what are we looking at in terms of capabilities here? Yeah, nothing too crazy, Sam. You know, your standard high balls, vodka, soda, rum and coke, whiskey, ginger, but these couple ingredient drinks are, are the most popular at a place like a sports stadium or a concert hall. Um, people aren't going to get really fancy mixologists to work on their drinks for seven minutes. They want to get their cup, they want to get to their seat, and they want to have a good time. So that's what we specialize in with Rotender. Hi, I'm Matt Shea, co-founder and CEO of Canopy Our Space, where we manufacture heat shields for the most challenging environments. One of those challenging environments is Earth's atmosphere. While it may protect us from dangerous elements such as solar radiation and freezing temperatures, it is also one of the most destructive environments for both air and spacecraft. During Earth re-entry, a spacecraft is subject to extreme temperatures and g-forces strong enough to tear it apart. Operating in dangerous environments is something I'm familiar with. For eight years, I served as a captain in the Air Force operating conventional and nuclear weapon systems on the B-52. As an operator, my biggest concern was the integrity of critical components such as targeting and flight systems so that I could accomplish my mission. Much like those critical systems, every spacecraft re-entering the atmosphere going hypersonic speeds needs thermal protection systems, a specialty heat shield made of thermal tiles that protect crew and cargo during re-entry. Currently, there are over 100 companies developing everything from reusable rockets to orbital spacecraft to re-entry capsules to hypersonic vehicles. So many that by 2030, there will be an estimated 6,500 of these types of vehicles operating that need 1.2 million square feet of thermal protection. That's a $3.5 billion annual market in 2030 that will be unaddressed. Because today, companies face limited industry talent that is locked inside NASA and DOD-backed commercial programs. These companies spend millions vertically integrating their own supply chain that require years of R&D lead time. This bottleneck will prohibit future space development if left unsolved, and through extensive customer discovery, we found significant demand for a better solution. That solution is Canopy, a fully integrated factory that leverages software to rapidly determine customer thermal protection needs, advanced manufacturing to reduce lead times and costs, and smart composites to assess vehicle structural integrity in real time. 
We start by taking a customer's vehicle model and design the thermal protection system around it. The heat shield designs are then passed to a proprietary 3D printing method that enables up to 50% lower costs and 80% shorter lead times versus today's manufacturing processes. Finally, to track structural integrity and set a new standard for safety of flight, we've embedded wireless sensors directly into our materials. The data we gather from our materials is used for predictive maintenance, allowing us to maintain heat shields for our customers throughout their vehicle life cycle. Today, we're excited to announce we've raised 1.8 million in venture funding and we're awarded $225,000 in contracts from the Air Force and NASA to advance thermal protection manufacturing for hypersonic and space vehicles. We also have a NASA Space Act agreement, $95 million in letters of intent, with six commercial customers and two provisional patents in 3D printing and sensor integration. All this progress was only possible because of the great team at Canopy. After the Air Force, I spent the past two years in business school, researching the industry, and also met my co-founder, John. He has a PhD in material science and has spent over a decade in R&D and manufacturing, developing new materials for the DoD. At Canopy, we understand the science, mission, and end user needs to build these materials for the next generation of America's space and defense industry. Thank you. What is the long-term vision for Canopy? Yeah, so the, the long-term vision for Canopy is to uh, develop better manufacturing processes for the space and defense industry um, a lower cost, more cost effective thermal protection solution or, or TPS that we can actually layer on to other manufacturing processes uh, on the terrestrial side and support other parts of the industry as well. Space companies are traditionally capital intensive. How is your company different? So Canopy is different from most companies in that we are leveraging existing legacy manufacturing processes out of NASA and materials that have flown previously. Um, they're operationally qualified and they have flight heritage. And so what we're doing is we're building IP around that manufacturing process to make it more cost effective, um, to make it faster, and then to reduce the overall lead times there. So we can actually cash flow a lot quicker with our company because the first year of funding we're bringing on, the equipment that we bring on, we can actually develop materials the legacy way. And then we are advancing the manufacturing process through 3D printing, more autonomous processes, and where we can actually decrease the cost further. Uh, and actually integrate that uh, one step at a time in our company. How has your previous career experience helped in starting Canopy? In my previous career, I was in the Air Force where I was a B-52 weapons officer, so that was managing and operating and employing weapon systems. Um, during that time, I had learned leadership, how to build teams, how to uh, effectively make decisions without having all the data and all the answers around me. So by starting a company, you were seeing a lot of the same problems where you're building a team, you're, you're leading people, um, you're making decisions without having those answers. So that's giving me the confidence and ability to, to start a company like this from the ground up. Aside from that, the overall mission of the Air Force and the military itself was to defend the U.S. and, and actually you know, defend the U.S. and, and all of our, our key allies and interests. So seeing that at an early uh, and young age, being able to be part of some, a mission like that is something I'm very passionate about and something that I can still indirectly support uh, on the commercial side. Thirty-five million. Of the over 200 million overweight people in the U.S., 35 million can't lose the weight through diet and exercise alone. I know. I'm one of them. I'm Liz, CEO and co-founder of Relish. I've tried it all to lose weight, but only got heavier. Finally, 210 pounds, desperate, I invented the world's first fitness tracker, Mio. Made to track heart rate and calorie burn during exercise, it was sold globally in all Apple stores and acquired by Adidas. But despite its rigorous use, I still didn't lose weight. The surprising reason why I and 35 million others can't lose weight through common diets? Chronic stress. Chronic stress leads to mental health issues like depression and anxiety and has been proven to be directly correlated to obesity. Chronic stress changes the brain and body, leading to intense cravings and unexplained weight gain, changes never before tackled in the history of diets. For years, people tried to lose weight with stimulants, vigorous exercise, and counting calories, points, or carbs. Then, diet apps offered tracking, coaching, community, and even behavioral psychology. Still not enough for us with deeper issues. We need something more. 
We need Relish, a comprehensive program that addresses mental health struggles, prescribes medications to give a quick weight loss win, and coaching to create lasting behavior change. All combined, Relish delivers a unique happiness-based weight loss solution that works. And here's how. First, meet your doctor who will create your healing plan, which includes prescription medications delivered to your door. Then, with your health coach, start our proprietary, clinically validated digital program compressing years of psychotherapy into a 12-week course. Next, you will continue to work with your health coach to reach your health and happiness goals with ongoing support from our community. Through this novel approach, our 200 patient pilot showed 11% body weight lost by six months compared to only 5% in 12 months, twice the weight and half the time of our competitors. And we've clinically validated that the weight stays off. Those 35 million people only we can help is an untapped market that represents an $11 billion opportunity. Our founding team are the world's leading weight loss experts, and our program was developed from our treatment experience, including seeing over 30,000 obese patients at Kaiser Permanente. Covered by plans, our program is offered via monthly subscription. We sell to individuals directly through employers, partners, and medical clinics. In the last year, we've completed a 200-person paid pilot, earned $100,000, started three patient referral partnerships, and we're on a path to 1 million ARR in the next year. And our playbook makes expansion easy. From our weight loss beachhead to smoking, alcohol, drug addiction, and more, anything where stress triggers unhealthy habits, we can treat. This will be huge. So join us as we tap into an unserved but massive market and even more importantly, help 35 million people find freedom from the weight of dieting for good. Obviously, you know, weight management is a, is a field with a lot of players in it. Um, what would you say is your differentiator? How, how do you stand out in that market? Yeah, weight loss is definitely a crowded space. There's a lot of players in it. Uh, I would say that the key differentiating factor that we have is that we are based on a protocol that was developed over decades that was developed in, at Kaiser that you know was effective on 30,000 people that uh, had issues with weight. And it was during that uh, period of time at uh, Kaiser's Positive Choice Weight Loss Clinic that uh, Dr. Folletti discovered the relationship between mental health issues and obesity. It actually led to something called the Adverse Childhood Experiences Study that Dr. Folletti undertook with the CDC. So by virtue of the fact that we actually recognize that there are deep underlying issues which drive weight and drive obesity issues, and it impacts actually some 35 million people, we were able to develop protocols that actually worked on that root cause of the issue. So unless you get to the root cause, and we are actually the only program that explores root cause utilizing prescription medications and psychotherapy, unless you get to the root cause, people are doomed to repeat that cycle of yo-yo dieting. And how would you say that you uh, measure effectiveness? How, you know, how, how are you tracking that? Well, we like to say, Effectiveness is actually quality of life. So um, how we measure effectiveness is how happy are our patients and how are, much are they enjoying life. We look at things like um, depression, anxiety, quality of life survey. Uh, of course, weight loss is a, is a metric. People come to us because they want to lose weight. But ultimately, weight is typically a symptom of something else. And so where we're really strong is that we get at that thing which is actually driving the compulsion to eat, the thing that is driving people to look for food for its psychoactive benefits, you know, for food as um, kind of an antidepressant, if you will. Hi, I'm Yokchi, founder and CEO of Charter. We're building the new standard for satellite logistics. I grew up reading science fiction about space exploration, and I've always loved what the genre represents, the endless potential of human endeavor and our unrelenting drive toward a destiny greater than ourselves. So imagine my disappointment when I finally got the chance to join the space industry and manage a satellite mission, only to spend most of my time answering emails, writing reports, and tracking changes across spreadsheets. You see, satellite missions are complex and present unique challenges like design verification and validation, compliance filings, and launch. 
And because no single existing software tool allowed me to manage all of these things effectively, I had to improvise. Excel for some things, pen and paper for others. I wasn't the only one. Throughout the industry, across both startups and Fortune 500 companies, hundreds of thousands of engineers are wasting 60% of their time, totaling to thousands of hours per mission on busy work and inefficient processes, making this a $44.5 billion problem. Here at Charter, we're solving this by building the first specialized platform of logistics tools tailor-made for the satellite industry. We pull in all the data sources from the different aspects of a mission and unify them in a single UI so that teams can manage and coordinate everything, test campaigns, requirements, scheduling, documentation, and even launch, all from our platform. They can configure custom workflows and critical paths to meet their mission needs. Mission critical information is displayed directly on the platform so it stays visible, making it easy to coordinate and progress missions, even at scale. Changes made anywhere on the platform get automatically flagged to relevant team members and their impacts are dynamically propagated in real time up and downstream at both the systems and program level so everyone understands what's going on without having to be manually updated. With user-defined role-based permissioning, you can control who sees what, even if you bring on external contributors and partners. No more getting blindsided by avoidable delays and communications disconnects. No more unreported changes causing critical errors. We keep everyone in the loop so teams can maintain a shared, high-level understanding of this complex environment. In the past year, we've raised an oversubscribed pre-seed round, launched a closed alpha of our platform, and embarked on private pilots and partnerships with industry leaders from around the world. Today, we are thrilled to announce a collaborative pilot with the NASA Jet Propulsion Lab to investigate how our platform can help support the EELS project, which is maturing a robotic technology concept to explore ocean world environments like Saturn's moon and Celadus. I'm a former logistics officer from the Singapore Army Engineers and a lawyer specialized in space law. I've known my co-founder Yukun for nearly a decade since we first served together in the Army. With over a decade of software engineering experience, he specializes in building scalable enterprise software. Our all-star team also hails from some of the most recognizable companies on Earth. The engineers building humanity's future deserve better tools. Reach out to us today if you'd like to help us get them back to doing what they do best building, pushing the needle forward, and actually getting the damn things up there. Charter was founded in October 2021. Can you talk about the big picture of what you're building? Absolutely. We are building Charter to be a fixed quantity, an assumed skill, a given. When students run missions, it, they should be run on Charter. When students graduate, the very first question that should come out of the interviewer's mouths would be, can you use Charter? And when anybody says the words, I want to launch a satellite, the default assumption should be that it's run on charter. And when they say that it isn't, the resulting question should always be, well, why the hell not? If you succeed, what will the world look like? I think that the industry will have undergone a step change in the way that spacecraft are built, launched, and managed. Uh, if you imagine two circles nested within each other, the larger one being the realm of possibility and the smaller one being the realm of practical reality, Charter's success would mean that the smaller circle within the context of the space industry just grows a little bit bigger. Uh, the industry will have unlocked new possibilities, will be able to push towards new innovative concepts and achieve things that were just previously out of our reach. We first met in January. Since then, you've had a lot of traction with Charter. Can you talk about the secret to your success? I never stop trying to prove myself wrong. At every single stage, whenever I form a hypothesis about what is or isn't a valuable course of action to take, I go out and I test it relentlessly. Uh, I understand and we understand that building traction is not about uh, developing a souped up product that does everything. It's about listening and understanding what our users' needs are. We really genuinely care about what our customers' problems are and we are aiming to solve them uh, as effectively as possible. And I think that if you adopt a strategy like that, the product begins to take shape well before a single line of code is even written. Uh, and that is the secret to our, to our success. Hi, my name is Ole Shon Taiwo, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Additive Space Technologies. When I was five years old, I marveled at anything that related to the air, space, and rocketry industry. I had just been to Cape Canaveral and got to see the space shuttle launch. I was amazed these large vehicles would generate so much power and launch into space. I was so intrigued that over time, I worked hard to become a rocket scientist. 
I ended up becoming employee number 15 at Rocket Lab USA, where I got to build the world's fully first 3D printed rocket engine that made it to orbit. I then went to work for Virgin Orbit, where I got to help build powerful rocket engines using novel 3D printing technology that we developed in-house. When building rockets, the engine is the hardest part to make, generally taking six months or longer. With 3D printing, it took us only two months. The problem is that the rest of the spacecraft still needed to be built with traditional methods, and that took another 18 months while our super speedy engine was sitting on the production floor. It was at that moment I knew something had to change. And that's why we started Additive Space Technologies to fundamentally change the way we make big things in aerospace. Currently, the aerospace 3D printing industry is limited in size to less than two feet at a time, accounting for a $1.7 billion market. To make meaningful structures, you have to print many small things and assemble them together. This is time consuming and does not allow for meaningful scale. At Additive Space Technologies, we are building a 3D printer that will enable us to make any structure from aircraft and spacecraft fuselages to space station modules. Printing at a scale of over 20 feet at a time expands our business into a $250 billion total available market. Printing at this size brings forward unimaginable new innovations to the aerospace industry. To accomplish this, we are building the next leap in manufacturing technology. Meet our system, Aperture. With Aperture, we are 3D printing entire aerospace vehicles by using motion and collaborative robotics to print large structures. This reduces build time by up to 60%, decreases costs by 40%, and also decreases weight by 30%. We will build a factory of Apertures to serve the world's premier aerospace companies as a top tier supplier. Our team has the perfect background to execute this bold vision. My CTO, Anthony Dean, has over 17 years of experience in the Air Force modifying and building technology that enabled aircraft and spacecraft to be functional. I myself have gone from design to qualified 3D printed flight hardware at multiple aerospace companies. In October, we worked with Halo engines to go from design to hot fire testing of a high performance rocket engines in less than four weeks using our 3D method of manufacturing. We are finalists in Blue Origins Orbital Reef competition and have secured support from India's research space organization. We are also excited to announce today that 1517 and Techstars have funded our pre-seed round. We have done all of this in less than five months time. With this support and resources, we are here to change the way the aerospace industry manufactures forever. Come build with Additive Space Technologies. So where did the idea for Additive Space Technologies come from? It happened during the pandemic. Um, we were looking at there being more rocket companies than ever coming to the market and the hypersonics realm was still suffering. And people want to build the sexy thing of things that fly fast, um, but we didn't see there being manufacturing solutions that actually could help uh, deal with the supply chain issues that the world was dealing with in, uh, in the middle of the pandemic. So we really came up with the idea of additive space technology, uh, being able to manufacture the hard things in order to get to being able to build things like rockets and aircraft. This sounds really hard. Why has no one else done this before? Yeah, that's hard because of the fact that additive manufacturing uh, needs companies that really will adopt the technology for end users. Haven't seen that in the market yet, specifically at this size range that we're talking about building whole products 20 feet by 20 feet tall. That's really hard to do. And so what we're doing for our company is actually onboarding companies as we built the technology. We didn't build the technology first and have people talk later. We did it all at the same time. We have patents around our process that allows us to really not only Prints, but also automate the assembly uh, faction of what uh, what people are building. And so, for us, um, we're fully dedicated to working with people to build technology that they need, not not things that we think they might want. There's a lot of competition in the hypersonic realm. Can you maybe talk about why you are different than what else is offered out there? The reason that we are different is because we can build many different things, many different vehicles, many different designs in an order of magnitude shorter than everyone else in the competition. We have, because we're using printing, it's autonomous manufacturing that allows us to have no fixed tooling in our factories. I uh, can't say the same for some of the other companies in the hypersonic realm. That being said, we do not see ourselves as competition to these people. We're complementary to the ecosystem that's starting to be uh, birthed here in the US. When you drive in the car, there's something you pass multiple times and probably don't even notice. But when you need it, you know where to go. I'm talking about your local convenience store. 
They're everywhere. In the US, there are more than 150,000 convenience stores, and there are more than 1.2 million globally. When you walk into a store, you probably see a lot of snacks and drinks and one person working at the cash register. But what you don't see is the chaos happening behind the scenes to keep that store running. With hundreds of cases of new inventory getting delivered every week, more than 5,000 unique items, and multiple delivery apps, these stores are constantly running out of products that their customers want to buy, leading to $50 billion in lost revenue every year. We're Bev's, and we're on a mission to save your local convenience store. Here's how we do it. A convenience store opens up the Bev's platform, goes into their product library, and purchases inventory in just a few clicks. When that inventory arrives, it is automatically uploaded into their point of sale system and all of their delivery apps with the correct names, descriptions, and photos. And when their inventory is running low, they'll get a notification to purchase more. Now that they have the right inventory in stock, they'll receive orders from their delivery apps throughout the day, and all they have to do is put the items in a bag and wait for the delivery driver to show up. Just like that, these stores are streamlining operations and increasing their revenue by up to $54,000 every year. Most stores don't have any technology and at best have a point of sale system that can scan products as they're sold without any inventory tracking or e-commerce. Bevs is a game changer because we are building the first vertical specific software platform designed for the unique needs of convenience stores. Our business model is simple. We charge a $79 per month subscription to use our SaaS platform. Snack and drink brands also pay us monthly to advertise their products to our stores. Over the last six months, we added 83 convenience stores to our platform, reaching a total of 225 stores today. We're on track to more than double our pace of growth and reach 500 convenience stores and $70,000 in monthly revenue by June of 2023. Now I want to introduce you to the awesome team bringing this all to life. I'm Jason Vigo, the CEO and co-founder of Bevs. I spent my career leading marketing and operations teams and building company cultures. I was formerly the head of global employee communications and engagement at Citrix, and I'm a second time founder. My co-founder Victor is our industry expert. He spent the last 37 years owning and operating convenience stores and consulting for snack and drink brands. Our CTO Jim is one of the founding members of Ticketmaster Online. He also founded and exited a national wine platform and has over 35 years of experience managing small and large scale development teams. Bevs is also backed by some great investors like UCLA Anderson Angels, Stage 2 Capital, Golden Section Ventures, and of course, Techstars, with $1.1 million in funding to date. Join us as we create a new era of convenience. So I just wanted to get started uh, and, and talk a little bit about the, the origin story of Bevs. And so could you tell me a little bit about the founding team and how the concept kind of came together uh, and how we got to where we are now? Yeah, so Bev's actually started off as an alcohol delivery app. So think DoorDash for convenience stores uh, in January 2020. And things went pretty well in the pandemic, but we learned a few things that caused us to just completely pivot the business. The first was convenience stores weren't tracking any inventory. Uh, it was causing a ton of problems, lost revenue in the store, but especially online, because you can't really sell online if you don't know what you have in stock. The second was when we went to market, the stores told us they wanted one delivery app that they could really own as their own. And through the pandemic, customers came with DoorDash, Uber, Postmates, Drizzly, you name it, and it caused them to want all of the apps. They came back to us and said, we want to use what our customers are using. And the third was my co-founder, Victor, owns convenience stores. That's why we always did this for the convenience store, not really to build a consumer app. And so we pivoted to what we're doing today, which is a SaaS platform to help these convenience stores run their business, sell online and, and grow their business. Tell me about the target customer here. Uh, is, are, are you focusing more on the you know chain convenience stores or is this more the long tail of independent ones that you're focusing on? Yeah, great question. So we're primarily targeting the independents, the mom and pop convenience stores. This is one of my favorite parts of the business. These are typically first generation small business owners who've been pretty much overlooked by technology for decades now. Uh, and, and that's really who we're, we're looking to bring in. That doesn't mean we're completely avoiding the chains. When we are going to market, we are seeing that our platform works for both the independents and the chains. But today, our focus is the independently operated stores. And the cool part about them also is that 
most owners have one, two, three, five stores. So when we're going to market, we acquire typically a set of stores at a time and we're able to help these small businesses really be better. So in such a distributed uh, customer base, yeah. that presents some issues on the business development front. So how, how does that work? How are you building relationships with prospective uh, new clients for the tech or um, you know, how, yeah, how, how do you approach that kind of business development? Yeah, so most people think it's extremely challenging to get independent liquor and convenience stores to use technology. I think for most people and businesses, it would be pretty tough, but our founding story really is all about this, right? My co-founder owns convenience stores. He is our customer. We built our platform and then with the pivot, rebuilt the platform to be very specific for the needs of the convenience stores. So we found we are able to acquire them not easily, but effectively. Hi, I'm Jason Lee, co-founder and CEO of Phoenix Space, where we're leveraging my 25-year career in the space industry to usher in a new era of transportation. At Phoenix, we've developed the world's first tow launch system, which allows us to deliver any payload into orbit or any package across the globe from almost any airport. With Phoenix, we'll be able to deliver a package from Los Angeles to Singapore in just two hours. But we're starting with space because for corporations and governments looking to put assets into space, they're relying on ground launch operations from only five orbital spaceports in the United States. As a result, the wait time to launch is up to two years. Customers are subject to fixed schedules, are being delivered to limited orbital destinations, and are often delayed weeks or even months from weather, launch windows, and payload manifesting. The Phoenix tow launch system unshackles us from spaceports and allows us to use infrastructure that's been in place for over 70 years and can be found everywhere, airports. We take off from an airport using a conventional aircraft to tow our wing booster to 40,000 feet. The tow line is released, the reusable wing booster then performs a pull-up maneuver and delivers our rocket to 65,000 feet where it starts its mission either to space or to another location on Earth. Using airports in our patented tow launch methodology, we can send payloads to orbit a thousand times the frequency than what we can do in the US today, on demand, directly to customer's final orbital destination without disrupting commercial airspace. In addition to our fundamentally superior cost structure, we can scale to carry 75 times more payload per launch than the nearest air launch competitor. And changing how we get to space is just the first step in our journey. The space launch market is $12 billion and rapidly growing. And our platform also enables us to safely move packages across the globe at eight times the current speeds, allowing us to make deliveries for the most demanding customers. When we look toward terrestrial logistics, this represents a $250 billion global express delivery market. Led by veteran aerospace executives, Phoenix has a world-class team of 23 industry experts who bring lessons learned from a wide array of competitors. We've raised over $9 million to date and have MOUs with major commercial customers, representing up to $32 million in annual revenue. Phoenix has a cooperative research and development agreement with the Air Force Research Lab, a Space Act agreement and exclusive license with NASA, as well as a commercial space operations support agreement with Vandenberg Space Force Base. We are transforming global delivery and critical supply across land, sea and space. Come join us. Thank you. Why Phoenix? Why isn't anyone else using tow launch? Yeah, good question. Uh, Phoenix was founded in 2017 on two decades of tow launch development and $40 million in related expenditures. We have multiple tow launch technology and methodology patents, including a NASA exclusive license. We completed a subscale prototype flight test last year to prove out key innovations. Uh, we're now fabricating and assembling a suborbital system that will begin flight testing at White Sands Missile Range in the second quarter next year. The aim is to demonstrate key subsystems that will fly directly on our orbital system and conduct two launches in one day for responsive launch operations.
What makes your approach more affordable than existing or other solutions? Typically, up to 80% of the cost of a rocket is first stage related. Our first stage um, is an existing tow aircraft. Another way to look at it, we're leveraging the billions of dollars and, and cutting decades that it took for the aircraft's development, flight testing, certification and operations. Our second stage wing booster is also fully reusable uh, after it lands back on the runway from its mission. It's filled and ready for its next one. By mass, about 90% of our system is aircraft, and this allows us to operate on a fundamentally superior cost structure. One of the issues with other air launch systems is that you need to man rate the launch vehicle as it's carried in close proximity to personnel on the aircraft. And when you have to man rate anything in space, your costs increase an order of magnitude. We don't have to man rate our launch vehicle because the personnel on the aircraft is decoupled from our wing booster. And tow launch provides major size scaling advantages. Uh, a Boeing 747 can tow a Boeing 747. What is your big vision for Phoenix? Our vision is to transform global delivery and critical supply across land, sea and space. Our initial focus is to address the space launch services market through you know, responsive, differentiated capability at market leading pricing. Then we'll use our flight proven capability and, and the global infrastructure built for our space business to address the rapid global delivery and supply transportation markets including uh, critical contested logistics resupply, both for land and sea. What an amazing group. We are so proud of how much you've accomplished in just 13 weeks, and even more excited to be by your side as you continue moving forward. I'm Jenny Leung, Program Director of Texas LA, and before moving on to our online meet and greet, we have a few thank yous to give to those who have made this program what it is today. First, to our hundreds of mentors, thank you. In just our first month, our founders collectively had over 1,130 mentor meetings. Thank you for living the gift first value and showing up in person or virtually to give our founders your time, expertise, and access to your networks. Next, we have an amazing collection of global partners who not only gave our founders access to big company resources, but also rolled up their sleeves and dug in to help them succeed. Thank you to all of our global partners for your support. To our venture capitalists and residents, Sherman Williams, Anna Rosenstein, and Kim Nixon, our investment associate, Alex Tonhazy, and especially our program associates, Julian Young on Ops and Amin Mirza on BizDev, thank you for showing up every day with your great energy and readiness to help our founders. We could not have done this without you. Finally, a big thank you to the families. Your support while your wives, husbands, girlfriends, boyfriends, mothers, and fathers participated in the program meant so much to them and we are so happy to welcome all of you to our family. To the audience, thank you so much for tuning in. We will now be moving to part two of our Demo Day event. Please join us for our online meet and greet where you can speak live with all of our companies. This will be held on Hopin and the link can be found in your Eventbrite and in the description field below. See you there.